Good evening. We are breaking news right now. The Sabah opposition leader Tan Sri Musaman is currently making a move to take over the state leadership over uh, Datuk Sri Shafi Abdal. Our correspondents currently in Kota Kinabalu reports that there are still literally no movement regarding uh, the uh, folks inside uh, Tan Sri Musaman's uh, house. Um, this is because we are still monitoring uh, Tan Sri Musaman's. Um, um, I guess uh, assertion uh, just now that he will seek an audience uh, with the governor of Sabah, or the TYT of Sabah, and present to him uh, the SDs that have been signed regarding their support or signing over their support to Tan Sri Musa Aman. Esrawan is of course covering this live right now and over the next few hours we shall update you, our viewers, on what this means to you, uh, the people of Malaysia in general and of course the people of Sabah in particular. Joining us is the Associate Professor of uh, Science, uh, Communication, sorry, Communications Department of the Faculty of Social Science and Humanities. Uh, doc, Associate Professor Dr. Lee Kwok Tiong. Uh, Dr. Lee, let's try to uh, look at the situation right now. Um, a lot of Malaysians are currently quite confused with the simple majority that is needed. Um, could you explain to us the situation of the number it needs to form a government in Sabah? Uh, Dr. Lee, are you with us? Uh, Dr. Lee, are you with us? Can you hear me? All right. We shall continue on our uh, conversation with uh, this. Uh, we will get Dr. Lee back. Uh, back on this uh, situation right now. Uh, we know now that uh, the uh, post-election uh, uh, in uh, 2018, it was uh, 60 uh, members of uh, the uh, state assemblyman that was needed. Hence, with 60 total members, uh, one would need uh, 31 seats to form a government. The confusion right now, at least for this evening, for the rest of Malaysia, is that uh, within that 60 elected members of the State Assembly, um, Sabah has a unique situation where five uh, members can be elected into uh, the State Assembly. They are literally called the nominated members, and there's five um, nominated members. And with 60 elected, plus five uh, nominated, um, bringing a total of 65. Um, an individual would need to enjoy at least uh, 33 members to support he or she to become uh, the chief minister of the state, not 31, um, as we've seen uh, after every uh, general election. So because of this confusion, uh, people are trying to understand what would the powers of nominated members have, what would the nominated, what would be the uh, powers they don't have, and what would it need uh, for uh, an individual to understand the situation better right now. So to recap the situation uh, post uh, election, uh, Datuk Sri Shafi Abdal uh, did have uh, Datuk Sri Shafi Abdal did have. A majority of 43 members prior to this evening. This number seems to evaporate uh, very quickly over the next uh, few uh, days. Uh, and of course, uh, joining us is a political analyst right now, Bridget Welsh. Bridget, um, thanks for taking the time to speak with us. Um, you have been on several channels uh, for uh, throughout the day. We've seen you on Al Jazeera and all the other channels as well. Um, and uh, we now want to get your views on the situation right now. What do you make of this uh, situation right now that is happening in Sabah? Good evening. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Um, I would say that there are two fundamental things going on. Uh, one, of course, as you know, is there's been a long contestation between Musa Aman and Shafi Abdal. And I think uh, we can see when Musa Aman was uh, uh, acquitted on this, uh, uh, his charges were dismissed, I think that the politicking began for him to take over uh, the, and return back to the state leadership. And I think this uh, was an issue that has been longstanding, even right after GE, four, um, GE 14, after the election. 
And uh, this process has involved intensive negotiations uh, to try to pull different people over, um, and, uh, and, ha and he has managed to get, uh, from what I understand, the numbers to form a new government. But I also think that the second side of this is that what's happening at the national level. I think that um, in order to be able to carry this out, you need to have national support as well. And of course, this is a period of time where um, you know loyalties are being tested and, and being reassured. Uh, and I think those things are going on and mutually reinforcing each other um, at this particular point of time. What we find interesting, Bridget, is that in the press conference that was held by Tan Sri Musa uh, earlier uh, this evening, he was citing some federal support. Um, Home Minister Dato Sri Hamza Zainuddin was mentioned in his uh, press conference. Dato, Nar Dato Nardin, um, the political secretary of the Prime Minister, was also mentioned. Um, of course, we haven't gotten confirmation from these gentlemen themselves, but what is the idea and what is the intention of uh, Tan Sri Musa Asan mentioning uh, these federal figures in his uh, notion that he has uh, support uh, to make a run for it uh, in, uh, in uh, the uh, leadership of uh, the state of Sabah? Well, I think there are two things going on. Number one is that I think that um, uh, uh, Musa himself needs to legitimize by saying that he's actually um, got support outside to do this. And that, so I think that um, yeah, this, by referring to, to federal support, he's actually trying to strengthen his position. And I think, uh, in particular, uh, to convince certain local actors uh, that, that their, their federal factor is quite, was important. I think also what's going on is that, that given the instability and the, and the rather slim majority that Muiden has at the national level, he's also sending a signal of support uh, to the current government and to the Muiden Yasin uh, at this particular point. Point of time, which is a time where, after what's happened with the verdict yesterday, uh, there are concerns that there will be movements and, uh, and, and potential defections from uh, from his numbers in Parliament. I think this is actually is a mutually uh, symbiotic and mutually reinforcing relationship. Uh, Bridget, one more question. Um, what we're trying to understand from some of the comments coming in from his faction is that they are saying things like uh, snap elections uh, is in the air, they want more snap elections, um, but at the same time they're arguing that they have the numbers needed uh, to maintain power in the state assembly. What's going on here? Do they have the numbers or do they want elections? Well, I think you know it is. There may be some fluidity still, but my understanding that should, is that uh, that Musa does have more of the numbers, but it is it is very close. And there is also discussions about some of the nominated MP uh, Adunz. So I think, uh, but my sense is that he has the numbers. But the question becomes whether or not they can actually uh, potentially go to polls at the state level. And I think this is something not being fully cleared yet, up yet, as I understand it. But uh, most likely, my sense is is that there will probably be a, a new government in Sabah led by Musa Aman. Uh, Bridget, one final question. The feed that we are seeing just now is literally the live feed coming in from the residents of Tan Sri Musa Aman. Um, it seems like from our correspondents uh, there, uh, my colleagues in KK, um, Musa Aman has not made the move to the palace. What's holding him back? Well, um, I think he has to assure that the TYT, is, the governor, is going to be able to swear him in, and I think that may be an issue. I think the other thing is there is whether or not uh, he clearly has all the numbers. Uh, the numbers are, are, could remain in fluid because there's been intensive negotiation. Uh, and of course, there could be a sense of uh, 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 some resistance. Uh, uh, this has been a process that has been intensified in, for over the last few days. So there may be some, re um, some dealing and attempt to try to pull back. Uh, and of course, we've seen in the things that the messages that have come out, conflicting numbers being reported. Thank you, Bridget. That was Bridget Welsh of the Nottingham University. Uh, we now go back to our initial um, guest, uh, Dr. Lee of uh, um, Sabah. Uh, Dr. Lee, I'm, uh, yeah. just to check the audio, are you with us right now? Yes, yes. Okay, Dr. Lee, I, I, the question earlier was on the numbers needed to unseat the incumbent. What is the real number needed? to get that simple majority uh, that is so much or so highly sought after by the leaders in Sabah right now? Okay, the simple majority that they need, I think, is only 33. 30, 33 seats. I think 33 or 34 seats is enough. That, that is a simple majority. Because uh, 
Taba has 60 dun plus with five what you call it nominated dun adun latikan. So total is 65. So to make it simple, majority is 33 actually. Uh, Dr. Lee, this uh, Adun Latik Khan, nominated member, is something that yep. is not well versed by the rest of Malaysians out there. What powers uh, do they have um, as members of the State Assembly being nominated uh, into the Assembly? Okay, Sabah, actually it is under Sabah State Constitution. Is a, we have a very what you call it, special clause uh, where uh, the government of the day can appoint five what you call it, Adun Latik Khan okay, to, form, to form the government. Okay. So normally they have a same, what they call it, uh, equivalent or same, is it just like the same adun, uh, it's the same, what they call it, assembly man, they have the same status. And for example, like the, I think the case that is just like what they call it, uh, Madius Tangao has been appointed as adun Lantikan and then as a minister and then, and also deputy, what they call it, deputy chief minister. Okay, um, I, I also want to ask you some of the um, names that was uh, mentioned by my uh, colleague uh, in front of the residence of Tan Sri Musa Aman. Uh, some names were mentioned, including uh, Abidin Man, uh, Madinkir, uh, Musbah Jamli, Ronnie Lo, Osman Jamal, Kenny Chua, um, Hamisa Banapicho, Kong Kawang. It seems like it's not just from one party, it seems like the, the defection is coming from all sides. What do you make of this? Okay, first, okay, we have to understand that uh, during the G14, 2018, okay, the, what they call it, the number of the seats that obtained by BN and Warisan plus PH actually is tied, with, tied on 29. It's same, actually. So during that time, actually, Star, Star, the, what they call it, a uh, king maker. Uh, Star decides I have two seats, so they, they, they decide to join Barisan National to form the government. But less than 48 hours, there are few, what they call it, uh, uh, assemblymen from the BN cross over to join Warisan to form the new government. So what we see today are actually uh, most of the, what they call it, uh, BN assemblymen, those those assemblymen who win, who won under the, what they call it, uh, BN ticket, they return, they go back to Barisan National. They return back to Barisan National. Joined by a few others from PKR, okay, this Kenny Chua was there, if not mistaken, and also there is uh, what they call it, appointed assemblyman uh, from DAP. Okay, we also want to know the um, uh, call by some of uh, the members within uh, Dato Sri Shafi Abdal's uh, camp. Uh, they are calling for a snap election. Uh, they are saying that a snap election is in the air. Um, do you think that this is a possibility uh, for them to have a snap election? And if so, uh, is this going to be just uh, you know, something that is going to be targeted or called upon by uh, Datuk Sri Shafi Abdal's team? Or is it going to be well received by every member in the House? Okay, of course, there is a possibility, what you call it, uh, snap election. Uh, first, actually, we, we don't have, we, we, we cannot don't we don't have to get too excited first. We have to wait until uh, Musa Tansri Musa Aman train as a chief minister, okay? Or else, because as you said just now, there is a possibility that uh, Shafi will seek audience with the TYT to dissolve the tour, okay? To give way to the snap election, okay? But because of, due to the federal government, uh, what they call it, uh, PN now, Perkata National. If there is a snap election now, I think it will be a, it will be a, it will be a what they call it a difficult task. Okay, it's not easy for Warisan to retain all the seats okay, that they won in G14. We know now that uh, the uh, government under uh, Datuk Sri Shafi Abdal is from the traditional allies inside Pakatan Harapan. Uh, this include members from DAP, PKR, um, UPCO. Um, what's the situation like with the allies of Warisan inside Sabah? What is the mood like amongst them? Okay. Oh, Dr. Lee, are you with us? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. The, what they call it, we have to understand that uh, Warisan actually didn't, didn't win in G14. They only managed to form the government after Akko crossed over to join them to form the government. Okay. And most of them, most of those 
assemblymen who join them during that time actually is because they want to be in the government of the day. Because they know the important for the share of the people, they know the important important to be in the government for in order for them to help the people. Okay. So what happened after the federal government changed after the PH, uh, PH government collapsed after the federal government changed after the federal government collapsed? So I think most of them they decide to turn around, make a U-turn to go back to their previous what they call it the previous uh, the previous party. Okay, Dr. Lee. Uh, the, uh, another angle that we need to ask is, of course, the views of the people right now. Um, are there any um, uh, people um, coalescing uh, in the camps of uh, Tan Sri Musa Aman? Are people actually congregating um, inside the traditional areas of Datuk Sri Shafi Abdal? Or it's actually business as usual, no one's leaving the house, everybody's maintaining social distancing right there? Okay, I think the answer is that there will be a mixed feeling among the people, I think. Okay? It's depending on who you ask. Okay? Those who cite Musa Aman, definitely, those who cite uh, pro-BN or pro Prisata National, definitely, they'll see this opportunity. They'll be very happy to see this is going to happen. Because the rumors, uh, the PN, uh, the government, the state Sabah state government will change, has been going for quite some time. So, and suddenly, now, it looks like it's going to happen. Okay? And for those I think for for Warisan and PH supporter in Sabah, they need it. They, they will feel very upset with this what is happening now. Okay, so I think my answer is it will be, it will be a, what they call it a mixed feeling among the people. What about you? This is my final question to you. Um, how are you feeling uh, regarding this situation right now? Pardon, sorry. What's your feeling? Your own feeling? Your own views on this? What's happening? Okay, I'm, I'm sure that. Uh, it's like something like what they call it uncertainty because uh, we, we didn't actually uh, Musa haven't country Musa Aman haven't haven't what they call it trained as a new chief minister and we don't know what's happening. Okay, uh, we don't know whether Shafi will try to seek audience with the TYT to dissolve the uh, to dissolve the dune or not. Okay, so at the moment I would say that it will be still uncertainty. uncertainty. Right, thank you, uh, Dr. Lee. That was uh, Dr. Lee Kwok Tiong, uh, Senior Lecturer of Communications Department at the Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities in UMS in Kota Kinabalu. Uh, we'll go for a short break. When we come back, we'll have four more uh, political analysts. Um, uh, one of them is, of course, Dr. Arnold Puyo of Sabah. Don't go anywhere. After this, we'll have Dr. Arnold. <laughs> Thanks for staying on with us. My colleague in Kota Kinabalu is at the uh, residence of Tan Sri Musa Aman. And the reason he is there is because of a special press conference that was held by the Sabah opposition leader um, early this evening saying that he has the necessary numbers to form the next government in Sabah. Um, Tan Sri Musa has announced that he is seeking the audience of the governor of Sabah, the DYT of Sabah. However, no movement yet from his house. So joining us right now is Dr. Anil Puyo, political analyst. Dr. Anil, let's understand a little bit better about uh, the feelings and the situation and the mood of the people right now. What do you make of the situation that is currently happening in Sabah? Uh, yes, uh, hello, good evening. Can, can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Loud and clear, Otano. Okay, um, I think this uh, this is expected in the in the beginning, but it's just that uh, people are not too sure when it is going to happen. But now it is happening. Um, I think uh, the issue now is uh, whether the DYT uh, is willing to uh, uh, accept the substitutionary declarations by Musa and his group and uh, whether or not he will eventually call for, for a step election. So there are many uh, interpretations, you know. So we're going to uh, wait for a moment, and we're going to wait to, to see whether uh, Musa will be installed as the next chief minister or whether we are going to see uh, a step election in Sabah. 
Some of the uh, political leaders inside Warisan is saying that they want uh, a snap election. There are liking, for instance, has said that he wants a um, snap election. Um, Adrian Lasimbang has said that he wants snap elections. What about the people that support um, Pakatan Harapan or support Warisan? Do they want um, snap elections in Sabah right now? Um, but, but, but when you assess the general feeling, the general sentiment, it seems like uh, um, more and more people want uh, to go for the election eventually, uh, to go back to the people and let the people decide whom they want to lead the next uh, Sabah government. And, and what about the supporters of uh, Tan Sri Musa Aman? Do they fear a snap election? Well, I think that the, the feeling uh, from the uh, from uh, Tan Sri Musa in, 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 in the group is that uh, it is the same way uh, in which uh, Warisan and Apko formed the government right after the election. So why can't they do the same thing? Uh, you know, uh, but that, that's the, 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 the general feeling among some some people in the group. But I think overall, overall, uh, the, the sentiment is that uh, the best way to solve this issue is uh, to go back to the people. Okay, Dr. Arnold, I'm wondering if you can yeah. hold on the line. Uh, there's some updates regarding uh, the situation right now in front of uh, uh, Tan Sri Musa Aman's uh, residence. It seems like uh, there's some movement there. Perhaps we can speculate that he is uh, making his way to the Istana Negri or the State Palace. I don't know whether we can play this visual. Do we have that visual right now? There you go. Um, and my colleague is there, Ruzaini. Uh, Ruzaini, um, do I have Ruzaini on the line? Okay, Ruzaini. Ruzaini, silakan Ruzaini. Ada pergerakan ke depan rumah uh, Tan Sri Musaman? Uh, terima kasih rakan suka uh, Setakat ini kami uh, kalau tadi kami berada di Jalan Temasulu yang di pekarangan uh, Tan Sri Musaman, tapi sekarang kami bergegas ke Jalan Istana di mana uh, kalau penonton boleh lihat di belakang saya ini sekarang uh, sepasukan uh, polis sedang berkumpul untuk membuat uh, satu um, uh, satu uh, pemantauan rapat di, di, di jalan istana ini uh, dan untuk pengaturan penonton di rumah juga uh, setakat ini kami masih menanti-nanti uh, sebarang perkembangan yang uh, yang berhubung uh, senario politik semasa di mana uh, kalau uh, penonton boleh lihat Uh, jalan di istana ini sedang uh, di, dipantau oleh uh, uh, pihak polis dan uh, uh, ada juga uh, 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 pengamal media juga turut berkumpul untuk membawakan uh, perkembangan semasa mengenai senario ini. Uh, apa yang menariknya di sini se sehingga ke jam 11 ini belum ada apa-apa uh, pergerakan yang telah dilakukan dari kedua-dua pihak di mana uh, menurut kabar angin tadi Uh, kami menerima maklumat bahawa uh, uh, Datuk Sri Syafi Abdal uh, telah bertemu dengan uh, Tunjuhan Merudin, uh, Tuati Sabah tetapi tidak tahu apa intipatinya yang telah diterima lah yang setakat ini uh, namun uh, setakat ini belum ada sebarang pergerakan itu saja yang boleh kami bawakan uh, mengenai perkembangan semasa yang, yang uh, sekarang ini Ya. Terima kasih Ruzaini. Uh, itu rakan sejawat saya Ruzaini Zulkifli uh, di uh, Kota Kinabalu. Uh, my colleague Ruzaini is of course uh, monitoring the situation on the ground both at the residence of Tan Sri Musa Aman as well as uh, the route uh, towards leading towards uh, the state palace uh, where it is believed uh, that uh, the uh, governor of Sabah is there currently. Um, let's move back to Dr. Arnold Puyo. Dr. Arnold, this is the thing yeah. about the situation right now. It's still there's still plenty of rumors. You know, this fog of war that is currently happening. The latest that yeah. we have uh, right now, as you have heard yourself uh, by my colleague Ruzaini uh, in KK, is that um, there's an uh, there's a rumor that uh, Shafi Abdal has met the governor. Do you think that this sits well with the rakyat? regarding the situation of uncertainty um, and continued uncertainty with no end in sight. Do you think that this is something that the rakyat is going to stomach uh, in the near term? No, I think, I think, I think overall uh, the people 
are unhappy with what they see um, just by looking at the reaction, the comments of, of many people on the social media and just based on my interaction with many people. I think uh, more and more people are not really happy with what they see uh, at a time when the country needs to uh, address the issue of our economy due to COVID-19, but yet our politicians are uh, defecting from one party to another, causing instability. I think in general, uh, there seems to be like unhappiness <laughs> among the among the people. The 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 yeah. the sentiment that you bring about right now doesn't this um, responsibility fall on the state government of the day? Um, is yeah. the state government underperforming to a point where that sense of restlessness is currently happening right now amongst the rakyat in Sabah? Yes, I, I believe so because uh, I mean it started when uh, uh, they were not able to come up with a solid plan to address uh, the issue of economy, state's economy, and how to move forward uh, post COVID-19, and also when. Uh, when there is this issue of uh, nomination of Shafi'i as Prime Minister, there seems to be uh, uh, dissatisfaction, uh, differences of opinions among uh, people in uh, Wanisan and uh, people in uh, Pakatan Harapan uh, group, you know. And also, uh, there seems to be like a pressure on the Wanisan and PH uh, leaders in, in Sabah to uh, switch the support to Tan Sri Muhyiddin in uh, instead of uh, Mahathir. So this kind of uh, things create um, uh, uneasiness, uh, create uncertainties. I think probably this is one of the reasons that triggered the defections of uh, Odesan uh, members to, to PN. We will soon let you go, Arata Anil, but uh, my final few questions would be on that statement that you mentioned just now, um, the talks of uh, Datuk Sri Shafiq Abdal taking over the Prime Ministership and so on. That whole federalism conversation is still there uh, amongst the State Assemblymen uh, in Sabah, which is quite interesting because um, when Tan Sri Musa Aman uh, made his uh, press conference just now, he was talking about Datuk Sri Hamza Zainuddin, uh, Datuk Nordin, uh, the Polsek of uh, the Prime Minister. Um, is he indicating um, that uh, he has uh, the federal support uh, to form a new government in Sabah? Well, that is a very inter interesting uh, statement. And that also alludes to the, to the, uh, probably to the fact that uh, the federal government is, uh, is there to support uh, Musa and his group. That is very interesting. Uh, but then again, I think uh, at the end of the day, the federal government would not want to interfere too much. Uh, and then they would uh, well see how this situation unfolds in the next uh, few hours. Thank you. Uh, that was Dr. Yeah. Arnold Puyo, political analyst, calling in. Um, right now we have another um, uh, viewer, I guess, another uh, political watcher, Doc Midin, who has been on the show a few times. Uh, Doctor uh, Professor Dr. Hamidin, uh, let's uh, rewind the situation right now. Where are we at? How many numbers is needed to form uh, the new state government um, uh, in Sabah? I think for new government to be formed in Sabah, the current opposition need only 14 members. Uh, and seeing from the, what is happening today, uh, I think uh, they already secured 15. So they are more than uh, have enough numbers uh, to secure and to form a new government in Sabah. Which begs the question, why haven't they literally made the move from the residents of uh, um, Tan Sri Musa to the palace to see the governor? I think even though they have a secure, and most of them secure through SD, but I think looking at the dynamic of the current political situation, I don't think anybody can really ascertain what's going to happen until the swearing ceremonies happen in front of the TYT, whenever it's going to be. But I think it's very interesting to look at, I believe now it's still, what we call it uh, in politics, the uh, horse trading is still on, negotiation is still on, uh, both sides, in the both sides, I think for Musa Aman Kem, they want to get as many numbers as they can. And for Shafi also, they want to hold the port. So I think even though Musa in his PC claim uh, that he, he already secured 50 numbers, but I think Shafi and his team still try to maintain the status quo. 
And I think negotiation is still taking place in Shabbat as we speak. Now, Miriam, this is a sense of deja vu. I can't help myself but to express the fact that I've seen and heard and felt and experienced this before. What is the feeling of Malaysians in general, not just Sabahans, uh, regarding this uh, episode? I think generally you are right for us. I think the issues of changing of the government, uh, no part, we call it uh, fogging, uh, for example, in terms of from one party to another. I think to some extent people are getting fatigued of what's happening, politically speaking, since for the past 22 months, since 2018, in my point of view. So we need some stability. And even, in my point of view, if Musa Ahmad may need to form a new government by tomorrow, maybe, still, the instability is still there. So I think that we need now, and we, I, in my point of view, the civil society, the people must really uh, show and express our unhappiness towards the political uh, uh, player in Malaysia that they have to be measured enough to respect the spirit of democracy in their practice. Okay. Well, does that mean that we should ask for a snap election ourselves? I think that the best way, I think, is that. But uh, I was, uh, some of the information that I have, I, I think it's not very much in favour of that, especially uh, for the TYT, uh, to, to call for the snap election. I think some members of the Warisan has already called for, for, for that. And I do expect, uh, because of the current political situation, I don't think uh, TYC will call for the snap election. I think he will, uh, if he's satisfied, uh, as any other, as a, put it in the Constitution, that a new leaders emerge in the Dewan uh, Undang Negeri in Sabah, so he will appoint a new CM. Okay, final question, Dr. Midin. The issue right now is, of course, uh, um, the quick end to this episode. Uh, do you think that we can expect uh, the current government to stay in power or will we see a new uh, state government in power very soon? I think I, I do expect a new government will be formed very soon. All right, thank you. That was uh, Professor yeah. Dr. Hamid Hamid, of course, a political analyst that has been on this show for a few times. Um, we will end this particular episode, but my colleagues will continue on with the live coverage. Continue to stay with us, your number one breaking news channel, Astro Awani. For now, I'm signing off, and perhaps uh, I shall be monitoring this on social media, so follow me there as well. Uh, we'll take a quick break before my colleagues takes over uh, with the live coverage on the ongoings of Sabah. Mm -hmm.